Hey Shag Kids, Curtis Tucker here, aka Shags, with another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life, my personal journal of uh, working for myself, hanging out at the house, raising a dog and my daughters, and doing all those fun adventures uh, as that Buzz Guy, Enid Buzz, Shaggy Duck Studio, and all kinds of stuff, all the way from here in Enid, Oklahoma, the Plains in the middle of America. So thank you guys so much for checking in and a couple of quick updates. Uh, thanks so much for uh, checking in on the past episodes. It seems like the music one and the ones to do with the 70s are uh, the most popular ones. So thanks for checking in on that. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll uh, probably be doing more 70s related um, episodes coming up and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Don't forget, I've got Patreon. It's patreon.com slash shags. That's shags with two G's. Check it out there for five bucks. I will send you guys a shags um, sticker. I've got uh, those buzz guys. I've got uh, greatest decade known to man. We've got Shaggy Duck stickers. You guys will get all kinds of stickers. Um, just uh, become a Patreon member at five bucks a month. And what else? Um, I've recently gotten a huge surfboard. And so I think I'm going to, um, I've been wanting a surfboard. It's kind of a decoration uh, in my office or possibly sticking it back on my vehicle. But I've decided that uh, this one is huge and has a nice white surface, but it's got a really cool uh, seafoam green uh, border around it and on the bottom, but uh, I think I'm going to paint uh, some cool design on the top of it and make it a piece of artwork. Uh, that'll be my first uh, real piece of art as shags, and so I've been trying to think of what to do, and I was um, wanting to do a large canvas anyway, but uh, now uh, my large canvas is going to be a surfboard, and I think I am going to use, I've been thinking about using um, paint pens. I was going to use those on, on, board, on a board. Uh, I think that's what a lot of artists are doing these days. But now, uh, instead, I will be using the paint pens on a surfboard. So watch for that. I will have pictures and uh, update you guys on that. Uh, just uh, all the other stuff is kind of uh, in limbo, trying to get all that done right now. Uh, I think we're going to kick off uh, Buzzhead Radio again. Uh, discovered a website, a platform that will allow us to turn the radio station back on live 24 hours a day, but we can also play copyrighted music uh, at a really decent cost, which I wasn't even aware of. And so I believe we're going to uh, turn Buzzhead Radio back on as a 70s music station, but it's going to be 70s music with a twist, and we will reveal all those twists uh, coming up. So check that out. Uh, it will be on all of your streaming apps pretty soon. I think it's a dead station on a lot of them, like TuneIn and iHeart and uh, all those type of stations. But I will fire it back up once we get this going and let you guys know more about that. And so today's episode is kind of a fun one. It's uh, kind of a look back at an episode or a blog post that I did a while back. So I bought CurtisTucker.com, I believe it was around 2004, and I bought it. Uh, because I wanted to have CurtisTucker.com, and I didn't, you know, didn't want to lose it, didn't want somebody else to get it, and so I don't think, uh, looking back in the Wayback uh, Machine, I have not found any posts earlier than 2008, and so I'm thinking I did not actually start blogging on CurtisTucker.com until around 2008, and um, I think 2008 to about 2010 or 2009. Uh, it was just, I was just putting information on the website and not really blogging. And then um, 2009, 2010, I really started blogging, was doing a lot of uh, 70s blog posts, um, uh, daddy blogger posts, working from home posts, how to make money online posts, and things like that. And so uh, I've been going through, so, so um, all those posts are pretty much lost. I mean, I don't have uh, that. The, all those old CurtisTucker.com websites um, are long gone. Um, I've rebuilt it several times, and so the current one 
uh, has all new posts, but because of the Wayback Machine, if you go to Google and you search the Wayback Machine, you can um, go back in time on a lot of websites and you can pull up some really old web pages from different websites. And so I've been going back there and digging up some of the old posts and um, some of them I'm redoing, updating, and just maybe uh, copying them to the new CurtisTucker.com. But I found one today that I hadn't found um, in a while, and it's about 10 things that I... this Okay, so this, this was in 2010, so this was 12 years ago. Um, so 12 years ago, I was 48 uh, when I did the post, and what the post was about was 10 things that I had, um, after 48 years, I had acquired a taste for, and 10 things that at the age of 48, I still had not acquired a taste for. And so I read over the list of both of them, and uh, then, so today's uh, blog post and podcast and YouTube video is an update to that 2010 post. And so I'm going to look at the 10 things that I've acquired a taste for, 10 things I have not acquired a taste for at the age of 59. And the list are, both lists are similar, but there are some changes. And so I will give you guys all of the updated changes on those. And so what I mean by an acquired taste is, this is what I wrote in 2010 was, an acquired taste is a name given to something that is unpleasant upon a first or second experience, i.e. something that requires a deliberate effort to enjoy. And uh, that's, so that's kind of what these things are. And so what I'm gonna first do is I will read you the list from 2010, and then um, I will give you my updates. And we're gonna start with the list of things that um, I had acquired a taste for in 2010 at the age of 48. Uh, the first one was wine. So I remember, uh, you know, being in high school and college and trying to drink wine, and I just did not like the taste of wine. And so all through college and even into, um, you know, the decade after college, uh, college, I was not a wine drinker. I barely, if ever, drank wine. But then when I met my wife, Denise, in uh, 1997, 98, um, she was a Chardonnay drinker, and I started drinking Chardonnay. And so I did acquire a taste for wine, which I still have today. So, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, give you the list as it was and not tell you the changes uh, until after. And so so uh, wine was one of them. Beer, uh, I kind of had to acquire a taste for beer. Now that came a lot earlier. That came in college. Um, in high school, I was not a big fan of the taste of beer, but then in college, uh, I became uh, a bigger fan of beer, mainly just like Coors Light. And then now uh, as an an adult at the age of 48, um, I actually enjoyed the taste of beer because it brought back all of the memories of those parties that I went to in high school and college. And so uh, that was fun. Um, golf, at the age of 48, um, I had not played a whole lot of golf. So uh, growing up, I was not a huge fan of golf. Uh, in high school and college, I definitely did not watch golf on TV. And then um, as I got older and, and got into my mid, late 40s, um, became a member of the local country club and I started playing some golf. And when you play golf, you start to appreciate how good the guys are that are uh, playing golf and doing really good at it. So I did acquire a uh, taste for watching golf on television, um, also for playing it. Uh, news. Uh, number four on my list was news in 2010. Um, growing up, uh, you know, we didn't have all of the, uh, in the 70s, you had three channels and the news came on at, I believe, five o'clock and 10 o'clock. And then there was some news in the morning. And other than that, there was not a whole lot of news. There was newspapers, 
Um, I definitely did not read the newspaper for news in high school or college and uh, especially in college I did not keep up with the news on television and uh, just was not a news hound but as I got older um, Fox News came out, CNN, uh, 24-hour news, uh, a lot of news on the internet and so um, there for a while I was, oh and then talk radio, uh, talk radio um, was probably what really got me interested in, in news was uh, listening to some talk radio shows and so um, acquired a taste for news uh, in 2010. Jalapenos. So I remember um, growing up in high school not being a fan of uh, chili. You know, people would make uh, different types of chili and the people that made really hot chili I was not a fan of because it was hot. And then I remember being in college, somebody buying the um, hot variety of um, paste picante sauce and it was kind of burning my mouth and I thought you know I am not a fan of hot stuff and uh, then as I got older and neared the age of 48 by the time I got to the age of 48 I love loved hot stuff and I especially appreciated jalapenos and liked to put jalapenos on basically everything that I ate and so jalapenos was an acquired taste of mine by the age of 48. Um, jazz music was not a huge fan of jazz music uh, growing up. Didn't really hear it, didn't have a chance to hear it. But uh, into my 40s, uh, I just I mellowed a little bit and would pick up some jazz songs here and there, and especially going um, to like wine bars and uh, some fine restaurants uh, and stuff like that, you hear a lot more jazz. And so um, I gained a bigger appreciation for jazz in 2010. Musicals, I uh, was never a fan of musicals uh, in high school when they would put on the high school musical um, in junior high and high school. And then uh, definitely did not go to any musicals in um, college, after college, uh, did not go to, um, you know, local musicals at our um, theater or even um, musicals in uh, Oklahoma City or Tulsa. But as I got older, I began to appreciate my girls danced. Um, and so they were in some musical type things. And so, uh, and then more shows it seemed like came out. Uh, with a lot more musicals. And so um, I kind of acquired a taste for musicals, uh, singing and dancing, especially because uh, my daughter started um, doing that. And so uh, that is number seven on my list. I acquired a taste for musicals uh, by 2010. Elections, uh, prior, um, you know, growing up, was not a big fan of elections. Uh, was not totally aware of who was even running in any election other than the president and uh, never even cared really or watched um, presidential you know election coverage or uh, debates or anything like that and then I guess again um, it was because of it was probably around 1989 uh, kind of in there I started listening to talk radio and I think talk radio um, because all you know pretty much all they talked about were elections and politics and news and and things and so because I had gotten uh, interested in news I started getting more interested in elections and by the time I was 48 in 2010 uh, highly interested in elections who was going to win who was going to lose how the elections were going um, started watching uh, you know full coverage of the debates and the elections and all that stuff. Uh, that was number eight. Number nine, uh, had never been a huge fan of museums growing up. Never had the desire to go to museums in uh, cities that I visited, but uh, as I got into my 40s, uh, began to appreciate museums a lot more, especially art museums. And uh, anytime we go on vacation, and there would be a art museum, you know, somewhere near. Uh, always try to get over to see the art museums, uh, different museums of like a toy museum or uh, movie museums, just just about history museums, 
uh, things like that. So I have acquired a taste uh, and appreciation also for museums and like to spend a lot more time there. And then number 10 on my list, um, the smell of coffee. Um, now growing up, I just, I was never around anybody that really drank coffee. My mom did not drink coffee. My grandma drank coffee, but I think she only drank coffee in the morning. Of course, there were not, there weren't the coffee shops like there are today. You know, there weren't coffee shops on every corner. There were diners and the diners served coffee. But uh, as far as like these foofy uh, type uh, coffee places, there weren't those. And so um, was not around coffee a lot, but uh, as my wife, uh, started drinking coffee in the Starbucks and some of those other uh, restaurants became more popular and I spent more time in them. I did, uh, and then um, I think maybe like Barnes and Noble, uh, they had a, a, a coffee bar in Barnes and Noble um, near where my wife and I lived while she was going to just uh, dental hygiene school. And so I think I kind of acquired uh, a, a a taste for the smell of coffee um, uh, in 2010, by 2010. Uh, and so there is my list of 10 things that uh, by the age of 48, I had acquired a taste for. Now, I'm going to change that list up a little bit uh, now, 12 years later, after look, looking at it. Um, number two, even though I have acquired a taste for beer, and uh, I especially like wheat beer, and I like um, brewery type wheat beer. Not, uh, I don't drink as much, uh, I don't go buy six pack at the convenience store anymore. If I'm gonna buy beer, it's usually gonna be at a brewery or at a restaurant that has like a flight of wheat beers or something like that, but I don't drink I don't drink alcohol that often, and when I do, I usually don't spend my time drinking beer, and so I have acquired um, a love and taste of vodka. And so uh, my drink of choice these days at the age of 59 and here in 2022 is vodka. And so beer has been replaced by vodka. Um, I, I quit drinking uh, soda pop decades ago, and so I don't uh, drink any vodka drinks that have soda in them. But uh, you know, my go-to drink is vodka cranberry, which uh, you know uh, is pretty easy. But then uh, vodka and orange juice type drinks. Um, there's a lot of infused vodkas now with uh, you know blueberries and and uh, all kinds of different things. And so um, I can usually find a huge variety of vodka drinks these days. And so that replaces uh, number two on the list. Number three, I'm taking out golf because uh, after Tiger has uh, kind of not been uh, in the, you know, in the run for uh, golf tournaments like he was, I don't watch, uh, I don't play golf anymore and I just don't have the time, and I never got that good at it uh, at the age of 48 up until now. So, um, so don't play golf, and I don't really watch golf um, every now and then, um, but not. Uh, I don't make it a point to try to watch golf. So I'm gonna replace that with, I have acquired a taste for running, uh, and especially running outdoors, and uh, that didn't happen until I started that running outdoors, I think somewhere around 2012. And so that was two years after this first list came out. Um, but now I love, uh, I go out, you know, I do 90 minutes every morning. It's either running or uh, fast walking. And if it rains and I get stuck indoors on a bike or something, it drives me crazy and uh, I can't hardly do it. So, um, I mean, it can be literally 10 degrees outside. Uh, with a 20 mile an hour north wind and I will still go out and uh, get outdoors and get 90 minutes in. So I have acquired um, a taste for uh, running or fast walking outdoors. Uh, number six, uh, I'm going to take jazz music off of my list. Uh, although I still enjoy jazz, um, it hasn't become like an acquired taste as far as I, I still, I've got uh, vinyl albums here and I've got playlists on my 
um, you know, phone and I don't own any jazz songs. And so uh, jazz, even though I acquired a taste for a few jazz songs, it didn't become a big deal. But uh, this is going to be a weird one, but I have, an I have acquired a taste for OU football. And as a uh, OSU cowboy and a longtime uh, cowboy fan, it is a little weird. But when you have a daughter on the OU football team and a wife that makes you get OU season football tickets, um, eventually when you go to enough games, you do acquire a taste for OU football. And so um, as of 2021, Last year was my first big year uh, as a uh, not only an OU fan, but an Arkansas fan. Uh, so I guess we can throw Arkansas football fan. Uh, I've, I, have an I have acquired a taste for Arkansas and OU sports. And so, uh, you know, the other daughter is on the Arkansas Palm team. And so um, really enjoy going to Arkansas and OU football games and especially looking forward to this uh, upcoming 2022-23 season um, should be really fun. And so um, that is an acquired taste at the age of 59. And uh, I am going to replace um, the news. Uh, I'm not a fan of the news anymore. I quit watching the news for eight years. Um, I uh, there for a little while, then I started watching again for a little while, and now I'm not watching again. Um, it is uh, too split. Uh, everything is sensationalized. Uh, a lot of it's not even true, and so I just don't. Um, I just don't pay attention to the news anymore. Uh, so I replace that with here's something fun for you. Corduroy. I have a quite now. I remember. You know, corduroy was big in the 70s, and it wasn't that I loved it in the 70s. It's just that's all you could buy sometimes, and so um, wore some corduroy in the 70s. But uh, it used to drive me crazy that my my uncle was wearing corduroy shorts uh, in the you know in the 2000s, um, you know, late 90s and 2000s, and um, What's funny now is I love now uh, I have acquired a taste for corduroy and so I have a huge amount of corduroy shorts. I actually have a pair of blue corduroy shorts on as I record this podcast and I also have probably five pair of corduroy pants um, and probably five pair of corduroy shorts. So um, I have acquired a love of corduroy, as you know, I have acquired a, um, a love of everything 70s, and corduroy is one of them. And then um, I'm going to also, I'm going to change out museums because um, even though I liked going to museums, I don't go to a lot of museums. I don't make it a point to try to get to museums. So I'm going to change that 2010 item of museums to a 2022 item of sleeping which, um, you know, even 10 years ago, if you'd asked me if I like to sleep, I would have said, no, I hate sleep. It gets in my way of working and getting things done. Um, uh, even though I still uh, am up until 12, 12.30 at night, every night, um, when I do go to bed, I love going to bed and I love sleeping. And as much as I hate getting up at 5.47 every morning, um, I do enjoy sleeping a lot more uh, than I used to. Um, I mean, I love sleeping so much that, you know, the minute my, my head hits the pillow, I am asleep. And so sleeping at the age of 59 here in 2022 has replaced. Okay, so that is my old list and my new list of 10 things that I have acquired a taste for. Now, let's go over the list from 2010 of things that I had not acquired a taste for. This one, let's see if uh, any of these have changed. Uh, number one on the list, uh, I had never acquired a taste for cheese. And when I say cheese, we're talking like real cheese. Uh, I had not, I did not like real cheese, especially like a lump of cheese, a block of cheese, cold cheese. Now, uh, I do eat, I did eat uh, Cheez-Its and macaroni and cheese and pizza and uh, cheeseburgers, 
but as far as just eating a slice of cheese or uh, some of those weird, uh, weird Gouda and those type blue cheese, anything cheese uh, was not a fan of. And so uh, cheese uh, coffee in 2010 had not acquired a taste uh, for coffee. Actually, in 2010, I had never had a full cup of coffee in my life and so was just not a coffee drinker and uh, did not enjoy drinking I just didn't drink coffee, but uh, every now and then when I would go get a tea, sometimes uh, they would accidentally put the coffee bag in the tea maker, and I would end up with a, uh, especially at Sonic sometimes, you'd get a cup full of coffee. Uh, I would immediately spit it out, um, and uh, at the age of 48, had not acquired a taste for coffee, even coffee candy. Uh, anything that was coffee flavored, just not a fan of. Um, not that I tried it a whole bunch, but uh, scotch, uh, I was not. Now, uh, my father-in-law drank scotch, and so he would try to get me to drink uh, scotch with him sometimes, but uh, not a fan of scotch. Um, the, uh, I've got written down uh, that I did not enjoy the bitter taste. Or no, that was on coffee. Um, I just, uh, I've got written down, I don't get the whole scotch thing. And so I definitely think scotch would definitely have to be an acquired taste and uh, would probably have to be maybe a good scotch to actually like it. But um, as of 2010, was not a scotch fan. Uh, number four on my list was Vinegar was not a fan of vinegar. Um, I kind of remember my mom when she would dye her hair. I guess it had vinegar in it, so there was always that smell in the house. And then she liked, um, I believe, vinegar and cucumbers. And sometimes she would make that for dinner. And I was just never, uh, never a fan of the smell or the taste of vinegar. And uh, that was held true all the way up until 2010. And so that was on my list at uh, number four. Number five, ballet. Um, my girls, uh, even though they were in dance, uh, they did have to do a couple little ballet things, but just watching ballet on television, and if I would go to a musical and it had ballet in it, uh, just was not a fan. Not a fan of ballet. Although I did uh, find appreciation for pretty much every other style of dance, uh, which I hadn't really been that interested in before, but uh, still had not acquired the taste for ballet. Um, and I don't know why, Number that was number five. Number six, I don't know why I picked her out. I guess because uh, maybe somewhere in 2010 or around there, she had gotten popular or had some songs out, but uh, Barbara Streisand um, was not a big fan. Um, thought she was a good singer, but uh, just would never have downloaded or purchased one of her songs. Um, maybe maybe uh, could stand some of her songs that were in movies, but I just did not get the whole... I think because um, it's like one day all of a sudden she was this superstar singer and I just never knew exactly why. Um, seemed like it came out of the blue, um, so I was not a big Barbara Streisand fan. Uh, number seven, hockey. Uh, living in Oklahoma, we did not have uh, hockey. Hockey was never on television, and so I was never around hockey. Um, although when I went to junior college, uh, two of the guys um, that I went to junior college with had lived up in Canada, and they were they had played hockey and were big hockey fans, and so they would talk about it or watch it every now and then. And uh, if I would try to watch it, um, just uh, I guess we could lump soccer in with that. Just not a fan of watching either hockey or soccer in 2010. And so those, uh, so that's a little bit of a change there. But you, you probably could have put soccer on that list originally too. Uh, number eight, bluegrass music. Um, again, I'm not sure why I singled out bluegrass in 2010. Maybe uh, it was uh, popular at the time or something, but uh, you would not have found a bluegrass song 
on my playlist or I on my iPod or uh, in my music collection, and so uh, no bluegrass. Number nine, it just seems even weird to me that these were even a big thing in uh, 2010, but uh, time has passed me by really quick and I have lost track of when things um, came along, but uh, Crocs, those funky plastic shoes that people wear, um, never acquired a taste to even want to purchase a pair of Crocs. I've never worn a pair of Crocs. And as far as I know, uh, well, we'll see if I update the list, but um, not a fan of Crocs. I do remember buying Crocs for my daughters. And then they had those, they came out with those funny little things that you would stick in the holes, um, like little collectible, almost like pins that you could stick into the Crocs. I remember buying those. Uh, for my daughters, but um, Crocs was number nine on my list in 2010. And number 10, uh, in 2010, I was not a fan, had not become a fan, was not a fan of baseball. Um, did not watch baseball live, did not watch baseball on TV. And uh, I think I think by 2010, I, I was at least becoming a non-professional sports fan. Um, I'm pretty sure, but uh, baseball just seemed really boring. Even though I played it uh, when I was uh, a kid in Little League, um, I just was not a fan of watching much baseball on television. And so that is my list of 10 things that I had not acquired a taste for at the age of 48 in 2010. Now, some of the Change to that is um, I'll take ballet off of that list just because as my girls got older and uh, began to do add a little bit of ballet to some of their dances um, and then I, those shows came out, those reality shows of uh, So You Think You Can Dance and things like that. Um, started watching uh, you know, people doing a little more ballet, and so especially the guys and the people that can really jump, um, a huge appreciation for uh, those ballet dancers. Uh, and so um, I have acquired a little bit of uh, you know, a liking to ballet, you know, unlike in 2010, and so I replaced that with car racing. Um, I have not, to this date, 2022, acquired a taste for car racing. I don't know that I've ever watched the Daytona 500 or the Indianapolis 500, the Daytona whatever, though. Um, I don't know who the top race car drivers are. I don't know what their car numbers are. I don't know who their car sponsors are. Um, not a big race car fan, and I know, especially here in the plains in the south and the Midwest, um, it is a big thing. And we even have a speedway, dirt uh, track speedway here in Enid, Oklahoma. And I've gone, um, especially just to take pictures for uh, my job, uh, a couple of times. And I, you know, it seemed okay when I was there taking pictures, just because you get some cool, uh, especially when cars crash, you get some cool crash pictures, but um, just have not ever acquired a taste for the craze of car racing. So uh, that goes on my list. Uh, number six was Barbara Streisand. Now, as I've gotten older, uh, I have a huge appreciation for a lot of songs from the 70s that in the 70s I didn't actually even like, but now that I am 59, when I hear some of those songs from the 70s, it immediately throws me back to a fun memory of growing up in the 70s. And so uh, some of those songs now are, are some of my favorites and they're on my playlist. And I'm like, wow, that is such a weird song to be on my playlist. But it, I associate that song with such a happy uh, time in my life that... Um, and, and so the point is, uh, some of the old, especially 70s Barbara Streisand songs, especially from the movies, um, I have a, I have acquired an appreciation for. And so I'm taking Barbara Streisand off my list of not acquired taste, and I'm replacing it with one 
that I don't think I will ever acquire a taste for, and that would be winter. Um, as I get older, um, I cannot stand the cold. I am not happy if I'm cold. I don't like the cold. I don't like being outdoors in the cold. Now, I don't mind the snow. I don't mind, you know, but the cold winter wind, long gray sky days, um, just not a fan. Uh, if it's going to be cold, I want it to be snowing, but I don't want it to be blowing snow. Uh, and just, you just can't get out and do anything. It just, uh, I, I will never, and, I, and uh, I've never acquired a taste for winter. And so um, that is, that could be number one on my list, actually, uh, if you look at my 2022 list. But uh, so it's on my list. Um, so, and then number eight was bluegrass. I still have not acquired a taste for bluegrass, but I don't know why it was by itself because I am adding rap and speed metal, and there's probably some other weird uh, music genres that I could add on there, but uh, uh, still, for some reason, um, I have not acquired a taste for rap music, and I have not um, acquired a taste for that um, that real head-banging speed metal um, where the guys just scream really loud in the microphone. Now, some of the the guitar, you know, and drum and, and music I could maybe uh, listen to, but once the guys start screaming, and they're just screaming into the microphone. Um, no, not, not a fan, have not acquired a taste. So basically I'm changing, a adding some genres to the bluegrass. Uh, and then baseball, um, because of covering stuff for my job, um, Enid, Oklahoma has become the, we host the uh, National Junior College Division II World Series, and uh, my girls have dated some baseball players. And so I, I've, um, I've been to um, the ballpark here and some other, and then just going to baseball, you know, professional baseball games. Um, I have acquired a little more liking of baseball. Now, I don't pretty much don't ever watch. And I have, I, I have made an attempt to watch a couple of the World Series, um, especially like the last game of, of some of the World Series. But I don't watch like professional baseball just on a regular nightly basis. I would never watch uh, that. But I do... I have acquired uh, a little bit of a taste for baseball, so I have to replace that one. And uh, me being the internet uh, social media guy, trying to like and conquer all platforms, I'm going to say I've not acquired a taste for Snapchat. Um, I just don't, just don't want to do the Snapchat. Um, you know, I understand Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. And what I enjoy about those and Instagram is, you know, you leave a footprint, you leave things, it, kind of like a blog, you, you know, there's old posts, you can go there and you can look back in history and you can, uh, with Snapchat, uh, I guess it, it, to me, it's like more of just a messaging app and, you know, I've already got a messaging app, so why do I need another messaging app? And so I've never done the, um, what do they call them, streaks and, I think I mean I think I, I do have a Snapchat account, but uh, it's probably been a couple of years since I've even checked it. Um, did not have not acquired a taste for Snapchat, and there is my new list of things that I have not acquired a taste for at the age of 59 here in 20. 22. So um, you guys let me know what, uh, uh, basically what, either something you've, in a, you've acquired a taste for just like really recently, like if you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s and you thought maybe you would never acquire a taste for something, let me know. Um, you can hit me up at shags, and that's two G's, shags at shaggyduck.com. Send me an email. You guys, you guys start emailing me. Um, let me know what you think about the show. Let me know uh, if you have a, an episode idea that you want me to cover. 
or a 70s topic, anything like that. But uh, let me know if you all have uh, acquired a taste for something at, later in life that you didn't think you would. And then also uh, a couple of things that you have not acquired a taste for and probably, as far as you know, never will. I would love to hear those from you guys. And so if you're listening to this podcast, don't forget that I also uh, record it visually on a video and I'll up upload that to the Curtis Tucker TV YouTube channel. So you guys check that out. If you, um, I, I hadn't got it done by, so last week's episode was um, our adventure vacation to Disney World. And after I posted that podcast episode, I was able to put the video of our trip to Disney World together. And uh, it's like one minute under one hour, which sounds like a long time and really boring, but it goes really fast. And man, I had to cut out a lot just to get, uh, you know, an hour in there. But uh, it highlights a lot of the four Disney World parks. So if you have not been and you're just curious as to what it's like, watch the video. If you're going uh, in the future and want to know what you're going to encounter, watch the video. If you had been to Disney World many, many years ago, decades ago, and you're wondering how much it's changed, watch the video. If you want to just see uh, some fun roller coasters and stuff like that, watch the video. And so go to Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube and you can check out that video there. Um, eventually, I will uh, embed that. Uh, all those videos I will eventually try to embed on the curtistucker.com blog. Um, so hopefully all that stuff, even hopefully this episode I will have embedded there. So what else? Um, let me think if I can clear up some stuff since this episode is just a wee bit short. Um, so still working on the book, Banana Seat Squad, uh, watched Stranger Things this last weekend, which gave me a little more inspiration to get Banana Seat uh, book done. Um, Steve Stewart came out with his book, um, The Breeze, and it, it's doing really well, and so that's another incentive to get my book done. Uh, but I, I do jot down ideas, um, character development, things like that. So in my mind, uh, you know, I'm not actually like writing, writing, but uh, getting a lot of, of things down for that. Again, earlier I talked about, I've uh, been wanting to do some paintings. I see myself doing, um, you know, as I get older into my 70s, uh, 80s, being a painter. And so I've been trying to pin down, what am I gonna paint? What am I gonna, how am I gonna paint? What's that gonna look like? But uh, so for my first painting, I will be doing uh, paint pins on a surfboard. Uh, got that coming up. Uh, like I told you, Buzzhead Radio coming up. The uh, 70s Buzz podcast is uh, cruising along. Uh, tons of listenership there. Appreciate you guys that listen to uh, Tide and I there. Um, seems like there were some other things to update you on, but um, they are not coming to mind at the moment. So I think I am. Let me look around, see if I got anything new in here. Um, oh, um, not sure what I'm going to be doing with the 67, my mom's 67 Thunderbird. Um, could have some news about that coming up. Uh, I will let you guys know about that. So anyway, you guys have a great evening. I'll just get off here and uh, give me uh, time to get some things done that I need to get done. But appreciate you guys. You guys, please, if you guys have a blog or a podcast, I would love to follow you guys and listen to your episodes to get some inspiration and some ideas. So send me those uh, at shags at shaggyduck.com. Don't forget to go to Patreon and become a Patreon member. And I will send you, uh, here's, uh, here's one of the latest stickers um, from the 70s Buzz podcast. It's kind of the cool reflective one. But uh, you're going to get at least four stickers and a coaster. If, you ha if I haven't showed you the coaster, you haven't seen it, it's uh, from the 70s Buzz podcast. It's a, uh, the greatest decade known to man coaster. And I may be ordering um, new coasters tonight, which uh, so those one of those might be included. But it's a it's a fun little package if you like stickers. Uh, so become a member there, 
And again, appreciate you all listening to this funky little personal journal. Uh, Still not know. I don't know where it's going. I don't know. Uh, Right now, it's just kind of a rambling, but um, I am seeing you guys downloading and listening to the episode. So I greatly appreciate you guys. Um, You're the best. And uh, I'm going to get out of here and I will talk to you guys soon. See ya.